Good afternoon. Time to have a look at those markets. Starting off with the Asian side of things, where markets on that front were lower as the concerns around uh, aggressive Fed uh, policy re-emerged. Although China was higher after the country cut its benchmark lending rates, oil starting the week slightly lower at around uh, 96.62. And again, investors at this particular point weighing the prospects of uh, Iranian oil supply as global concerns uh, come through around uh, economic growth. However, markets are looking ahead to the Fed Chair Jerome Powell's comments on inflation late in the week at the annual Central Bank's uh, Jackson Symposium. However, to talk to us about what to look out for, especially when it comes to the week as we kick it off, we are joined by Michael Trahan from Vestec Asset Management. Michael, thank, uh, thank you so much for your time. I mean, you're looking at a lower Asian market, uh, European also lower, and especially when you look at uh, U.S. futures, is a similar theme playing out throughout our markets as well were we seeing that pullback yeah afternoon uh, Anastasia JC all share is down at the moment uh, I think just about every single sector is in the red um, and that seems to be on the back of uh, concerns around the Fed uh, increasing interest rates more aggressively than uh, previously expected um, and that's also part of the reason why we back at 17 Rand uh, to the dollar uh, money seems to be flowing out of emerging markets and in, into the U.S. Um, but having said that, you know, we, we're coming off of uh, four positive weeks and now only one down week. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably still too early to be concerned. Where are we on that, call it the push and pull of growth versus inflation and a Federal Reserve that's uh, trying to manage both? Yeah, I'd say it's probably in the too early to call uh, section. Uh, there's a lot of, I think it comes down to how quickly does inflation taper off. Um, so there's one part of the market that thinks inflation is stubborn and it's going to hang around for a long time. Uh, after the last inflation reading out of the US, the market uh, seems to think that in, the worst of inflation is behind us. Um, and the market's even uh, pricing in interest rate drops for next year. So aggressive interest rate hikes this year, um, but uh, starting to see easing next year. Um, obviously, we need to see what the monthly data comes in as. Uh, at the moment, growth is still looking pretty good. Um, but there's uh, some theories that uh, growth could slow off quite quickly because we haven't fully felt the effects of further uh, supply chain constraints. Um, a high oil market and uh, just generally a weak housing market in the U.S. So when you look at the uh, sort of pullback that we saw on Friday uh, over in Wall Street and you're also seeing a little bit of it when you're looking at uh, U.S. futures today, where does it put, uh, you know, Vesic Asset Management, especially when it comes to your risk appetite? Are you seeing buying opportunities? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the market's still well off its highs that we saw in December last year. Um, at Vestact, we, we have a 10-year time horizon, so if we, we were happy to buy shares at the highs in December, uh, we're more than happy to be buying now at these 15 20% discounts that we're seeing uh, compared to those levels. Um, and on days that we see pullbacks, we, we, we're more bullish and more aggressive uh, to our adding. So it's, uh, I think it depends on your time frame. Uh, you know, if you're a short-term trader where you're looking at uh, trading only over a few days, uh, you, your view can be very different. But for us who are very long-term, very bullish on, on humanity, uh, these sort of market uh, volatility fluctuations seem like great buying opportunities. Which is a nice question, I suppose, uh, into my next uh, sort of uh, question for you then. Um, are you expecting a, a, a correction or weakness when it comes to corporate America? Because that's what everybody was anticipating, especially from the Q2 numbers, and that doesn't seem to have transpired. Yeah, we probably think there's some hiccups because uh, some companies have been caught wrong-footed when it comes to supply chains. Uh, where some companies on one side are overstocked because they were really worried and now they've got stock that they can't sell. Uh, where at the other end of the spectrum, you're seeing companies understocked because uh, the constraints are worse than they, they forecast. So those sort of things still need to work through the system and that those will be uh, hiccups along the way. Um, but uh, I think um, you know, it's anything less than a one or two year um, is mostly driven by sentiment as opposed to actual fundamentals. 
um, and it's very, very difficult to call sentiment. So you could see a, a drop in earnings, but not see a drop in share prices, where the opposite is also true, where you can see a drop in share prices, but not a drop in earnings. Um, so we, we admit we're not smart enough to make these short-term calls, uh, so we stick to making long-term calls. So tomorrow we have Cecil releasing um, its results. Uh, any particular line items that you're going to be focusing in on? Yeah, I think when it, uh, you know, the Cecil share price tracks uh, the RAND price of oil quite, quite strongly. Um, and it's, it's very driven by how much hedging management has done. Um, so if management has done a lot of hedging, which means that they've locked in the oil price for the next year, uh, the SAS share price and profits generally tend to be a bit muted and uh, easily forecast, uh, whereas management hasn't done a lot of hedging, then uh, there's a lot more volatility involved. So hedging is the first thing, um, and then you have a look at production numbers. Uh, you know, they've had a few uh, shutdown, uh, unforeseen shutdowns this year, um, and now it's to see uh, how, what impact that had on overall profits. All right, Michael, thank you so much uh, for your time. That is Michael Trahan from Vestic Asset Management.